Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Mr. Levine. I'm in City College right now. I'm going to graduate trying to apply for um, three minutes by next year. Um, I've been working with um, last year with front Dr. Karen Bell, dealing with frontotemporal dementia. And this year, um, I found something very similar. But this one is actual research. Last year was clinical research. Um, my mentor's name is Pascal Kratias, and it's also in Colombia. So this is my research, which I started in June, not June. I'm not going to for like a month. And so this is the year I'm doing research based on motor neuron disease. And we try to use the C. elegans as a model for it. So before I start, um, I'm just going to tell you guys what motor neuron disease is. So motor neurons, like the neurons that are in your head, the cells, like they are specialized cells that send signals to your body. And they basically tell your body what to do. If you want to move your hand, it sends a signal to tell you to move your hand. And, and this disease, what it does is that it kills the cells, or basically like, it degenerates. So for the person to actually move his hand, he can't because the cell is not sending the signals. So that's why I'm um, really interested with the with the neurons, what they do. So the reason why we use the elements is because of their, their vertical, their ventral force right here, which is very similar to the human right here. So there are two kinds of motor neuron disease, which is the, the upper one, which basically if you have it, it's going to be very hard to control your thumb, your arms, and basically your chest movements. And the lower part is your whole leg is going to move. And for the worms, they also have some, something very similar. If they have the disease for them to move, it's for, they, have, they can move, but they move very deeply. You could tell through their very typical uh, movement that it's not correct. So these are the different kind of disease. These three ALS, PLS, PVP, and PMA happens um, at adult onset. Basically meaning that it doesn't affect kids who have it, but when they grow at old age, that's when it affects them. And this one, which um, my partner's doing research on, is the one that happens at a child onset. Basically meaning the child, when the child born with it, basically gets it. Okay. This is what we see again, so you me right. <laughs> so um, pay attention to how they move. They move in like a U shape, like snakes. But when they actually have um, the disease, like that would induce them, the mutants, they move very differently. I don't have pictures of those because I just started research like a month ago. So just pay attention to this one and mind you, um, maybe in, in the next three weeks, I'm gonna have some results. So about the elegance. This man right here is the guy who discovered it, and he's still alive. Um, his name is Sidney Brenner. He's from South Africa, and uh, you guys know about South Africa. Um, he's from his graduate from Oxford University. Um, they did a lot of work in biology. Um, I haven't read any articles from him, but my mentors, he gave me um, a recommendation this morning, so I'm gonna look it up. And he also wanted to know who his prize in 2002. And basically, he was the first one to use some C. elegans as a model for biology. Okay, C. elegans. This is a bad picture of it. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have one. So they are basically nematodes, nematode worms, and they live in soil, and they're very small. That with your bare eyes, you cannot actually see them. It's like one mil approximately one millimeter small. And unlike us, they're not equal eye. And they live for four days. That's when they become adults. Like they will live for two to three weeks, but in four days they come from they come from children to adults. And unlike us, they only have a thousand cells. And the neurons, which we were we are really interested in, is only three, up approximately three hundred. So the genders for them, they don't just have males and females. They don't actually they don't have a female. It's a hemophilite. And the male. And when I say I'm all for that, what I mean is that they have both sex organs. They have um, the egg cells and the sperm cell. So they basically need a man to make a baby. And for the males, like the, the way we could differentiate them is the tails. The males have a tail, as you can see, like a fin. 
but I'm off that habit, and I'm off that much more larger than the male. And also, it's also missing X chromosome. So why do we use the elegance? Basically, they have a small life, and you have a one that becomes that's a baby becomes adult in three days, and you can basically see all the neurons that are moving around and. These are the stages that they go through in less than in three days or less. So basically come from the egg cells they divide and then they become local stage one. And these ones, most of the time, some other researchers are interested in, but we're not interested in these ones. So most of the time what my mentor tells me to do is to stop them because we are mostly interested in this one because they made a lot. And what he tells me is he said that they are like teenagers, so I guess I think. Like I said before, um, they have um, 100 cells, and 312 of them are neurons. And one third of the neurons, one, um, one third of the cells are all neurons. So basically, it's easier to use this as a matter for the neurons than any other organisms. You could use rats, but it's not a process. So um, they also like us, the eukaryotes, which means that we share a lot of um, cells. And also, it's easy to maintain. All you need is to just put them in a petri dish. So my mentor um, let me do my research basically, basically on my own, I guess. So he wanted me to um, determine like, what he told me to do. He gave me two mutant genes telling me that to basically study it because no study had been done with those two mutant gene transcription factors. So my objective was to determine the transcription factors BAP15 and ZAP1 play a role in general differentiation. After seeing them through a microscope, um, I gave a hypothesis saying that the transcription factors, back to pin and zap, were displayed on ordinary behaviors because I saw them moving around in a big way. Instead of moving around like the one, the one I showed you before, they just rolled around back and forth, back and forth. So I figured that since this mutant just made them go like this, it does have to have something to do with the motion neuron disease. So before I go ahead, I'm just going to tell you guys what transcription factors are. Basically, let's say this one is a gene. It's the first thought that it's, it's a protein that is used to turn on or turn off the gene, basically. So let's say this is a gene, right? And it's your transcription factor. When it's introduced to a gene, what it normally does is it turns it on and create a protein that might have a phenotypical effect or not. And when I say phenotypical, it means something that you can see. And something might turn it off. But either way, it shows something that either um, the mutant gene is affect, um, the phenotypical effect, or it doesn't. So my path 15 actually showed a lot of um, phenotypical effects. And the path 15, which they said was an X chromosome, um, it's actually variable abnormal morphology. It changes. Is expressing in motor neurons. This was given to us ahead of time in the paper, which they already found out. But the interesting part was the survival rate of it. This was the only gene that gave us a problem. Just yesterday, when I went to the lab, it gave us a lot of problem because the progeny, meaning the babies that they had, came out very small. And we had it for like a week now, and it's given us a problem. So I, I focused on this one, the exact one, which is also expressing the neurons, and all it shows is the end behaviors. It doesn't move correctly. And the materials I used was a microscope, a petri dish, with a bacteria in, in the inside the circle form, so it could see it easier. Most, impo most importantly, a notebook, um, a Bunsen burner, and a fluorescent microscope. And we used this piece of material that we cut and chunk um, see elegance from this. And also there's another one that we used to pick, which is made out of platinum. It's really expensive, so if you have one, you have to keep it like a whole year. My methods are must right now is mostly based on Mendelian genetics. And I know most of you guys know Mendelian.